Yeah, so uh, you'll be reading for the part of Kyle. Kyle's the lead, right? My agent told me that this was a reading for the lead. You'll be reading the part of Kyle. The lead? Sure. Because Chad Kensington does not play supporting roles. Right, right. Uh, anyway, uh, can we get started, please? Yes, Jesus, let's hop to it already. Christ. Oh, hey, guys. What's up? Wait, what is that? What was that accent that you just did? I saw Kyle as being from the Ukraine. It's called acting. You have to let the performer make inferences about the part. What is this, your first movie or something? Okay, all right. Oh, hey, Kyle. What do you need? Oh, I, I just left my glasses on the table. Thanks. That's it? Th that's it? That was two damn lines! My agent told me that this was a reading for the I'm, lead! I'm sorry. Look, Mr. Kensington, I don't know what exactly your agent told you, but you're not what we're looking for for this film's lead. Why, why the hell not? I've got the experience, the look, the, the star power. What more could you want from a leading man? I, Mr. Kensington, what was your last successful starring role? Yeah? Yeah, well... Well, this script is garbage anyway. In fact, I wouldn't be caught dead in a piece of trash like this. Oh. I just wanted to help you out by offering my okay. services as a seasoned professional. All right, all right. Garbage, huh? I don't remember asking for screenwriting criticism from a pathetic husband whose only claim to fame is falling asleep. You son of a bitch. I don't need this, all right? I'm bigger than you. I'm bigger than this script. I'm bigger than this studio. And I'm bigger than all of it. Listen to me. You listen to me. You have fun with your little love story, all right? You call me. You call me when it tanks at the box office after six years of development hell. And I'll answer from the hot tub in my solid gold limousine. And we can have a discussion about everything that you did wrong, starting with passing on Chad Kensington. All right, all right, hot tub, right? Yeah. Washed up and delusional. Get the hell out of my studio. Screw you! Yeah. Try not to fall asleep on the way out, buddy. What the hell was that? That was not, that was not a reading for the lead. That was two damn lines. You are the worst agent of all time. You're worse than that monkey with the typewriter. You're gone, man. You're out of here. You're fired. Oh, oh, I, I, I has been, am I? W worst boss of all time, huh? You weren't saying things like that when I gave you this job. I know I just fired you, that's beside the point. I'll see you in hell too. Ah! Turn the camera off. Now is not the damn time. Chad Kensington has been called many things. Has been washed up. One trick pony, even never was. As you'll see here today, however, Chad Kensington is much more complex than those simple stock phrases suggest. Indeed, Chad Kensington is the embodiment of every insult that has ever been leveled against him, and so much more. This is the story of a man going from having everything and wanting nothing, to having nothing and wanting everything. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll probably want to maim Chad Kensington by the end. How would you like to be known for one thing for the rest of your life? How would it feel to be Randall Hope, that guy that made the Narcop documentary? That's how I feel every single day of my life. To everybody out there, I'm just Narcop. Hey, wait a second. Aren't you Narcop? Jesus Christ. Dude, can I get an autograph? It'll sign for free, man. It's all. No, come on, just one autograph. Uh, to your biggest friend, love Narcom. Screw you, man! There's more to me than that god-awful TV show, okay? Try to wrap your head around that. If I had to rank my list of career accomplishments, that mid-season replacement disguised as a major network drama, it would be right at the freaking bottom.
I was able to catch up with Knock Up showrunner Anna Stevens, as well as many of Chad's former cast members. Yeah, I mean, Chad was a real terror to work with. I mean, every day, complaining about something. Something was wrong. First season, he was fine, but after that, my God. In fact, a lot of those shark jumping moments towards the end were due to his rewrites. For example, like that one episode where it turned out the villain was the chief's twin brother with a split personality. Yeah, that was all Chad. And he acts like it's my fault that Narcop almost totally failed. Narcop was my baby. And Chad Kensington almost single-handedly killed it. Anna always resented me. I was hands down a better writer than she was, and I think when you have that kind of animosity towards one of your actors, all it does is breed tension on the set. She had it out for me. If she had just let me write some material like I wanted to, the show would have turned into the garbage pile that it eventually did. I mean, all the other crew members and actors loved me. This is Maria Peterson, Emmy and Oscar award-winning actress who portrayed Narcop's partner Gertrude Hyatt. Everybody hated Chubb. Literally everyone. See, son, I told you that things would work out. Sometimes you just gotta believe. Yeah. Uh... Crap. Fine. God damn it, kid! This is take number two! What Whoa. the hell are you thinking? We gotta get this done! Calm down. Oh my god, I'll be in my trailer! Dude, why are you such a dick? Get this the hell over with! I have a Manny Petty in four hours! <sighs> you see, son, I told you that things would work out. Sometimes you just have to believe. Yeah. Oh my god! Jesus Christ! You little bastard! Who do you think you are? What are you doing? I'm going to break oh, every hey, bone hey, in your body! Hey. Get off of me! Get off of me! I am the star! I am Chad Kensington! Let go! Let me go! So I can kill him! Oh! I don't need this! I don't need this! This is Ian Profen, the actor who portrayed Narcop's son on the show, Narson. After Narcop ended, Ian vowed to never act again. Working with Chad Kensington? was the single worst thing that has ever happened to me. That guy soured me on acting forever. Tales of Chad's antics and awful mannerisms on set persist to this day. Some of his crewmates agreed to tell the stories of their memorable encounters with Chad. Having a recurring role in a major TV series sounded like a dream come true. But unfortunately for me, that TV series was Narcop. I played Jay Combs. He was Narcop's go-to contact for tough cases. Usually in the show, he would come to my house and we'd sit down and talk for a while. And what was the nature of your tiff with Chad? Well, we were filming at Jake's house, like normal. I don't even remember the episode. And Chad seemed to be in a good mood. He and I were standing there talking, joking around. It was a nice as I've seen him in a while. But then, well, luckily, there was a camera rolling at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chad, that was a good one, man. <laughs> that was a good one. What the hell is that supposed to mean? That was a good one. Oh, Chad, come on, come on. See, see, this, this is my problem. Doesn't anybody have respect for lead actors anymore? You, uh, 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 I will kill you! Oh, what are you doing? Right right <laughs> yeah, so that was definitely my worst Chad moment. But would I do it all again? Well, the answer is, of course not. I played the widow of a dead man in season two. And the only word I could think of to describe my experience was harrowing. I think that the season was around the time that Chad started getting into heavy drugs. One day, during a filming break, he tried to stick his McDonald's bag down my throat. His lawyer said that Mr. Kensington may have been under the influence of Scotchgard and dryer sheets, and he thought I was a trash can. Chad tried to sell me a bunch of Scotchgard and dryer sheets one day. He, he looked really strung out, and it was just super uncomfortable for me. Hey, 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 Billy, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, Chad. Look, look man, you, uh, you, you, uh, you want to buy some stuff, dude? I no, know you're, no, that's I know okay. you're probably curious about how this stuff works, man. It's awesome, man. You got to try it. Look, look I'll, I'll, Kennedy, dude, I'll, I'll sell you some real that's cheap, poison. man. You're going to love it. You're going you're gonna to love it, man. It's no, awesome. No. That's real cheap, cheap, dude. No. Real cheap. No. 
sorry, Billy. Sorry. I didn't realize that you were such a square. Come on, Chad. Come on. I wasn't featured very often on Narcop, except for a couple times as a petty thief. And the only thing that I really remember about Chad is that he screamed a lot. And he also got me fired. He loved doing stuff like that. Because, you see, he'd always tell Anna that I left threatening voicemails on his answering machine. But the only threatening that I remember going on between me and Chad was when he threatened to cut me if I didn't know my lines. I didn't even have any lines that day. My experience on the set of Norcop was really unpleasant, I would say. Chad Kensington was a maniac, literally. Like, he used to force me to drink spoiled milk and videotaped it. It was terrible. And then this one time he called me about four in the morning and asked me to do his dirty laundry for him. The amount of drugs that I found in that man's pants was insane. But I always did what he asked because I didn't want to get fired. But he told the director that I was stealing from him and I was fired anyway. Here's what I say to all of those making allegations against me. If it's not on camera, it didn't happen. Several of these instances were recorded. Now we come to perhaps the most famous instance of Chad Kensington's borderline criminal on-set behavior. What was your role in Narcop, for those unfamiliar? In seasons two and three, I played Narcop's love interest, Detective Gwen Childs. Chad and I really seemed to get along at first, but then I must have done something to upset him. Okay, let me just uh, set the record straight here in regards to Dawn. Dawn had a swelled head. Dawn just thought that she was better than everybody else. Dawn thought that she owned the studio and that everybody else on the crew was beneath her! I think Dawn moved one of Chad's bags without asking. And yeah, yeah, and uh, that's what set him off. All of the animosity between Chad and I really seemed to come to a head when we were filming um, an episode in season three called Dead Tired. A scene from episode three of six of Knock Up, Dead Tired, required Chad to give Dawn a playful shove. This simple scene resulted in the infamous scuffle that cost Don Jennings her contract. All right, Chad, what I want you to do with Don in this scene is it's all we need is a simple, playful shove. It's a playful shove, I Chad. I get it, all right? It's all I'm we not need. mentally handicapped like okay. some people. Chad. Oh, good, good one. Put your script yeah. down so we can film this. <sighs> Whatever. All right, action. Chad. Chad. What? Chad. What? Would you playfully shove someone? That's not a playful shove. That was angry. Oh. Come on, Chad. Okay, fine. fine. Chad. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Come on. Whatever. Let's playful do it again. shove. Let's do it again. Sorry, guys. You ready? Action. Chad. Yes. On what planet is that playful? I'm just trying to add a little zest. To the scene, Chad, all right? Chad, it's called acting. Chad. You have to let me make inferences about the role. You oh, have fine, to. Fine. Chad, we'll do it your Chad, boring just way. Playful. Just, just. This is we do. We do this all the time. Don't worry. Okay. We do this. This, this happens. Uh, she's, I'm, I'm sorry. We ready? It's okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Should I brace myself? Action. <laughs> Chad, what was that? That was Chad! 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 Come on! What are you gonna do? Chad! What are you gonna do? I am the star! You Chad. can't do anything! Chad! I am Chad Kensington! And I rule you! Chad! Alright, Chad, I need you here. I need you here. No! Chad! Chad! Get off of me! Get off of me! You! I will have your job! You just hit Chad Kensington in the face! I will have your job! You will be fired! Chad! Who do you think you are? Or, we, should, uh, we, we should cut this. Is this Could right? somebody get some medication? I don't need get off of me! <laughs> Chad. Chad, Chad seriously? Or... Chad. Again? You do Again? this every day. You do this every day. That's because I'm working with hats! All the time, like Chad. You. Chad. 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 Oh. Why? Why do I bother? I don't know. I want to retire. After Dawn uh, instigated that little scuffle, I demanded that she be released from her contract or else I would quit the show. It worked. Because when Chad Kensington tells you to fire somebody, you fire them. I actually threatened to sue production if they didn't buy me out of my contract. Since Chad started the fight, I had a pretty reasonable case. I still think Chad thinks that he got me fired. Hell, he can think all he wants. 
I get a nice buyout from it, and I get to slap him in the face. I mean, the reason we put up with Chad for as long as we did was basically, even though he was a world-class anus, you know, he, he got the job done. I mean, his lines were subpar and his couldn't emote anything at all, but he made falling asleep an art. Unfortunately, the dissension between Chad and everyone else on the crew of Knock Up proved unbearable, and the show was cancelled in its fourth season, one episode shy of making it the minimum requirement for syndication. Chad was wasted on the day we were supposed to shoot the 100th episode. Well, we assume he was wasted. We were all set up and waiting for him, but uh, he, he wasn't there. I think we had literally every single cast and crew member trying to call him. Never picked up. Look, it's like I told Anna and everybody else on the crew, the reason I didn't come to film that 100th episode was because my Meemaw was in the hospital and we had just made the decision to pull her off of life support. It didn't feel right to come film an episode of some show when my family needed me at the hospital. Yeah, Chad's uh, Meemaw died in 1994 and um, yeah, he was probably just so hopped up on lewds or whatever else he could get his hands on that he didn't hear his phone ringing. 99 times. I'm lying. Actually, he did pick up once, but then hung up as soon as he found out it was me. My phone was turned off as I was in the hospital. Even so, I mean, Chad could have rescheduled the shoot. I was so upset with their behavior in light of my tragic loss that I immediately demanded they cancel my contract. Chad threatened to involve lawyers, but Anna was happy to just let him out of his contract. Yes, Narcop had come to an end. After four seasons, 99 episodes, and 56 Emmy Awards. Yeah, so at that point, on my time with Narcop, and as a result, the show itself, ended. I was finally free. Free from that crap pile. Free to move on to bigger and better things! <laughs> Yamaguchi Paper Goods, Ch Chad speaking. Chad did move on to other things, but were they necessarily bigger or better? Most would argue not. Chad himself will of course contend otherwise. Well, it's like I've already said, as a free agent, you open yourself up to a lot of new and exciting opportunities. And Chad certainly tried his hand at many different things in his post narcop years. So the first thing I set my sights on after Narcop was filmmaking. Uh, I wrote this big budget gambling movie called Spades. It was all about an international high stakes underground go fish ring. It was fresh, it was new. Nobody had ever done anything like it. I directed and started it, too. Go fish. Go fish. I sank almost all of my money into spades, and it tanked. Critics just weren't ready for a film of that caliber, and, you know, honestly, I wish my producers had exercised a bit more control over the project. But weren't you the sole producer, Mr. Kensington? Look, the point is, I took a chance, and I gave an Academy Award-worthy performance that was criminally overlooked. You know, it's not my fault the writing and framing were awful. It's not like I wrote or directed the thing. After that, most of my money went towards dryer sheets and overseas companies. But again, not my fault. My accountant, he was a piece of garbage. Every time I would call Chad to talk about his money, he would either ignore me, or when he did pick up, he would say, Oh, you have the wrong number. He said that? That son of a bitch! While Chad was dealing with the fallout of spades, his former co-stars were making out paths of their own. McDaniel Clementine, the actor who portrayed recurring villain D.A. Kavanaugh on Knock Up, went on to become a highly successful professional bodybuilder. Well, here's what I want you to show Chad! I want you to show him what success looks like! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Mr. Clementine, please, calm down. Oh, no! I will not calm down! He made 
on my weight on the set of Narco every day. He's the reason I got into bodybuilding. And now I want you to show him that I can snap him into a little twig. You hear that, Chad? Mr. Clementine, he, he can't see or hear you right now. Oh. Well, make sure he sees this interview. Yeah, that Clementine guy, he couldn't act to save his life. He's probably flipping burgers somewhere now, right? He's actually a fairly successful bodybuilder. Oh. Brazilian dance sensation Victor joined the cast in the series' second season, portraying the shifty detective Gilroy. Victor's performance was critically lauded, and ever since his stint on Narcop, Victor's records have gone triple platinum. Chad would always say things like, an epileptic ferret could dance better than you did, and act better too. The guy was a jerk. He tried to get me fired at least once per season, but I was too big a hit with the Brazilian demographic. Chad also told me to call him once one of my crap records went platinum. So I did. We actually have the audio recording of Victor and Chad's conversation regarding Victor's success. Oh, hello? Chad? It's Victor. Victor who? Uh, we were on a TV show together. I was the guy who an epileptic ferret could outdance. Oh, that Victor. Oh, so, uh, yeah, how you been, man? Any of those records go platinum yet? <laughs> oh, yeah. Triple, actually. What? Yeah, my album Dance Yourself Dead just went triple platinum. Just wanted to let you know. Why would you do that? Uh, you know, it doesn't matter anyway, Victor, because I've been working on some stuff of my own here, and... <laughs> hey, that's great, Chad. So, anyway, I got a proposition for you. I want you to come to my summer home and dance for me. I'll pay you $25,000 since I can spare that pocket change. I'll do it. When? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just joking about that. I just want to see how low you'd sunk. I think he actually did show up at my summer home. He danced for my housekeeper and demanded $25,000. The cops were called. Yeah, that Victor guy still owes me 25 grand, but, but that's beside the point. You know, he acted like he was the only singer on planet Earth. I tried my hand with a little music, too. Yes, although most of you probably never listened to it, Chad Kensington produced a studio album. Chad sank the last of his money into a failed record, I Just Can't Stop Loving You remix. It was critically panned as well as being a financial black hole. It is the only record in American history to have sold less than 25 copies. Rumor has it that 14 of those copies were purchased by Chad himself. Well, you know, I, I was trying lots of new things with Can't Stop Loving You. You know, it was a mixture of pop, rock, R&B, jazz, new metal, punk rock, screamo, grunge, uh, jazz fusion, spoken word, experimental, uh, polka music, you know, traditional Polish dance. It was, you know, the general public wasn't ready for that sort of thing. Noted music industry mogul Devone Bradley produced the album. When Chad came to me with his record idea and his complete lack of musical ability, the first thing I said was, why does it say remix if this is the first edition of it? He tossed a beer at me. I worked with him because I realized how much money he was giving me. Here's some rare footage of the music video for Can't Stop Loving You's only single, My Heart Hurts. As stated, the album and everything surrounding it was a complete and utter flop. I miss you so much, can't wait to eat lunch. Maybe it's a Captain Crunch. My heart hurts. 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 I think I'm having a heart attack. When I first told Chad how many copies he sold, how few copies he sold, um, he had a pretty resigned look on his face. And then he st stood up in my office, punched a hole in the wall, and just stormed out. A few days later, he called me about setting up an international tour. You know, I just figured, the Germans will listen to anything. Look at Hasselhoff. Even the Germans didn't buy it. So my album was a flop. It wasn't about the money. It was about the music. It was about trying new things. Can't Stop Loving You was new. People were just idiots, especially Germans. Perhaps you're wondering who purchased the other 11 copies of Chad's ill-fated album? Well, in the sea of hatred that is directed towards Chad by his former colleagues and those around him, 
I was able to find one curious individual who does not despise Chad Kensington. In fact, she is his self-described biggest fan. Meet Lisa Middleston, perhaps the only Chad Kensington fangirl in existence. I love Chad Kensington. He is the greatest actor in the history of modern history. I own all his seasons of Narcop on DVD and Blu-ray. His CD is the greatest album to hit ever. Me and my cat listen to it every day. What do you see in Chad exactly? It's indescribable. The first time I saw Narcop, I cried. Me and Chad are soulmates. My, my cat agrees. From that moment on, I dedicated my life to Chad. Oh god, that maniac? Jesus. That chick was obsessed with me. She was stalking me, even. I, she followed me around to all my media appearances, you know, talk shows, game shows, you name it, she was there. It got to the point where she showed up in my hotel room and proposed to me. Something about a cat being the maid of honor. It got to the point where I had to file a restraining order. I mean, the restraining order upset me, sure, but all good relationships have boundaries. <laughs> Has he mentioned me? Chad, don't you find it a little ironic that although you long so much for attention, you shun the one person who seems to be more than willing to give it to you, even if she is a bit unwell? The chick was crazy. She followed me to a hotel room and threw a cat at me when I rejected her marriage proposal. I don't need that kind of attention. Wait a minute, I long for attention? What the hell are you talking about, man? Although the album had left Chad completely penniless and further in the gutter than before, he still aimed to make a name for himself in the other areas of media. Sure, my, my last two projects may have failed, but you know, at that point the public still knew the name Chad Kensington mostly from tabloid magazines and late-night punchlines, but they knew my name, and they respected it. And that respect has never gone away. Meanwhile, Chad's ex-castmates continued to find great success in their field. The late Roy Cheeseman, who portrayed the Chief throughout Narcop's entire run, found success portraying similar characters, namely other police chiefs, on various other police procedural dramas. Cheeseman's first post-Narcop gig was the Chief in the hit series Dog Cop. Damn it, Dog Cop! I'm keeping you on a real short leash. After Dog Cop's conclusion, Cheeseman went on to play the chief in the critically lauded Burger Cop. Damn it, Burger Cop! You're a rare example of a cop I can trust. Well done. Cheeseman's final role would ultimately be as the chief in the unsuccessful and experimental series Dancing Cop. Damn it, Dancing Cop! At this rate, you're gonna two-step your way right into the slammer! Unfortunately, Cheeseman passed away in a tragic Gravitron accident. Since Cheeseman is dead and unavailable for an interview, we instead present you with some archival footage. Real art doesn't come from a person or a camera. Art comes from beauty. And life is beautiful. Life is art. Mike Beardsley, who portrayed corrupt politician Steve Vendrell, went on to, ironically, pursue a career in politics. One of my people told me that some British guy wanted to interview me about Chad Kensington. First I was like, who the heck is that? But then I remembered. I remembered, I remembered how jealous he was of me. I think he was offended by how much praise I got from the critics. They love Mike Beardsley. Who doesn't love Mike Beardsley? He said that? That guy's a joke, a Mr. Big Time Politician, huh? Let's compare Emmys and see who the jealous one is! Back when I was running for governor, we were at a Mike Beardsley rally, and everybody wanted to be at the Mike Beardsley rallies. The, the momentum was growing, and Chad showed up at one of the Mike Beardsley rallies, and I, Mike Beardsley, was speaking, so it was well attended. And I think he was drunk, or he had some other narcotic in him. Mike Beardsley doesn't use drugs. Mike Beardsley's never even drank, but Chad, he was sideways, and he was yelling at me, and the guards were holding him back. Mike Beardsley's security is first class, and they kept me safe. But I think Chad's gotten help since then. Mike Beardsley has lost track of him. Later, as the Mike Beardsley video team was showing me the tape, you could distinctly hear Chad yelling, let's compare Emmys, or something about his Emmys. Mike Beardsley's security staff didn't catch it all, but we did our best. Oh. Oh, you think I'm jealous of Beardsley? Just because he's a respected politician with legions of fans and voters at his side? 
Why would I be jealous? Actors get way more recognition than politicians, okay? You go to anyone in the street, anyone, ask them, I guarantee more will know the name Chad Kensington. I decided to put Chad's theory to the test. Excuse me, do you know the name Chad Kensington? Who? Chaz what? No, I, I don't, sorry. No, it's Chaz Kensington. Are you familiar with the name Mike Beardsley? Yeah, he's a politician, right? Oh yeah, he used to be on that one show, I remember that. Wasn't he an actor on that one cop show? Oh yeah, the governor of Pennsylvania! Why would you show that to me? Buck Jim, the bassy voiced announcer of Knock Up, would find his niche in voice work and poker playing. Yeah, I never actually met Chad personally. All of my stuff was recorded separately. But I hear he's a real jerk. I won a couple of world-class poker tournaments, so I have to be a creative advisor for that poker playing movie he made a few years back. When I called him, he got real mad and said it was about go fish, not poker. What do you mean the announcer from Narcop is a millionaire? But what the hell do I care? You know what? At that point in my career, I was ready to move away from the mainstream media. Yes, at this point, Chad tried his hand at stand-up comedy. His first and only foray into the genre occurred at the famous Junker Club in Northeast Philadelphia. Thank you. You guys have been a fantastic audience tonight at the Junker Comedy Club. I'd like you to put your hands together for our featured entertainer. He's here tonight all the way from the dumpster behind McDonald's. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Chaz Lexington. It's not Chaz Lexington, I'm, I'm Chaz. I'm not Chaz, I'm Chad, Chad Kensington. And um, you're not cop. No, no, not tonight. Tonight I'm, I'm just Chad. You're always not cop. I have a set that I need to work on. So if you I heard your set's a real sleeper. Guys, guys, if you could just shut your filthy mouth! Chad would suffer from a number of unfortunate rib, back, and head injuries here, facilitating a painkiller addiction that persists to this day. Who said I was addicted to painkillers? They're a goddamn liar! I'm only addicted to scotch guard and dryer sheets. Who said it, man? I'm gonna sue their asses off! You told me that, Mr. Kensington. Jesus Christ. I was finally able to sit down with the two actors who portrayed what could arguably be seen as Chad's co-stars on Knock Up. Maria Peterson and Ian Profen. After Narca, Maria starred in the critically acclaimed seventh entry in the Explosive the Clown series, Explosive 7, Jokes on You. Her performance as a career-driven FBI agent hoping to take Explosive down earned her an Academy Award and propelled her to international superstardom. I decided to use the money from Narca and Explosive to fund my own independent art film I've been wanting to make for a while. Maria's film, The Call, swept the Oscars in the year of its release, cementing her status amongst Hollywood's elite. meant to be about uh, our issues as a society, about the capitalistic and uh, commercialism that just permeates our lives in every section of, of everyday activities in the mundane, and really about the phallocentric nature of just the patriarchy and everything that's going on with fruit, as well as the extension of art and life that mesh together in this intricately woven blanket that surrounds us. Uh, interestingly enough, I offered Chad the lead role in the court, but um, you know he he may be a jerk, but in the end, we we've worked with each other for four years. 
Maria's script was garbage. Chad told me he read the script and hated it. I hadn't even sent him the script. But uh, I said I was sorry he felt that way and hoped the future treated him well. He said I should stop wearing these stupid glasses. And then, and then, she has the audacity to say, oh, I hope the future treats you well. <laughs> it was like, it was like the years, all the resentment that she harbored for me coming to a boiling point in one phone call. Maria is, and always will be, a hack. You know, at the end of the day, I'm upset that Chad turned into the person that he is today. You know, he, I've known him for four years and all that time I really believed that on the inside, Chad's just this scared and confused guy who, who just wants to be recognized for what he is. Chad, don't you agree that if you would start in the call, your career would have gained some much needed momentum? I mean, the film won several Oscars. Who cares about the Oscars, huh? Spades got snubbed at the Oscars. You know what? The Oscars don't matter. The Oscars are garbage. Nobody watches movies anymore anyways. Finally, we come back to Ian Profen, who portrayed Narsan throughout the entirety of Narcop's run. Profen's experience with Chad Kensington on the set of Narcop soured him on acting forever. Profen got into professional wrestling, capturing numerous championships as one half of the painkillers with Tyler Lenol. Unfortunately, the team was sued for copyright infringement by the parent company of Tyler Lenol, Johnson & Johnson. Lenol and Profen lost the case. Profen turned over a new leaf afterwards, now makes the rounds of schools across the country, giving motivational speeches about the dangers of copyright infringement. Kids, I was once like you. Young, anxious, ready to steal at any given moment. But copyright infringement is not okay. They should call it copy wrong. Some people question my career path. I don't. You know why? Because where I am now, I never have to deal with Chad Kensington again. Well, except for that one time. Profen is referring to the instance during one of his normal speaking tours. Mid-speech, a drunken Chad Kensington suddenly rambled onto the stage and accosted Mr. Profen. They just call it copy. Hey! Hey, you! Chad? Hey, Narsad! Chad, what are you doing here? What? Are you drunk? How you doing? How you, how you doing, man? Who the hell gave him a microphone? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Big Time Motivational Speaker now, huh? I always hated you! Chad, sober up and come see me later. I own the stage, all right? Chad Kensington owns the stage. I was performing before you were even wearing diapers, kid. All right, Chad, get out. Shut up! Or I'll make You're you You're gonna let out. me talk! This is my stage! Oh yeah, you think he's so big! Mr. Mr. Big Time Motivational Speaker, huh? Ex-wrestler, big up! Oh! Ah! 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 Sorry about that. Remember, don't do drugs, kids. That was a dark day for me. I don't do things like that anymore. Chad didn't press charges, mainly because he didn't remember the fight. He did what? You see, this, this is why I never liked that kid. He thought he was better than me. He was always trying to steal my limelight. That's why I went to the cops about his copyright infringement. Chad Kensington tried to make my life a living hell. I hope he's miserable wherever he ends up. Well, we now know where Chad ended up. Most recently, he appeared on the popular Food Network show, Mystery Kitchen. Welcome to Mystery Kitchen with your hosts, celebrity sponge heiress Deidre Von Sponge, certified public accountant Haas Dingleberg, and beloved TV icon Burger Cop! Mr. Kensington, what is this dish you have here? Uh, today I have uh, Hot Pockets covered in wasabi. No, it's not. It's chicken patty covered with mustard. Yeah. Chad, I couldn't help but notice that you didn't even use one of the ingredients that we asked you to. Hey, you assholes aren't the boss of me. I'll cook with whatever the hell I want. Well, Mr. Kenny, after tasting that, that was pretty god awful. We've actually agreed that we're not even going to judge the other competitors' dishes. Screw you three! 
Do you know who I am? Uh, a terrible chef? I am Chad Kensington, and I could have bought and sold you two years ago. Oh, I, I thought I recognized you. You're that guy that fell off the stage at the comedy club. Ah, yeah, Narcop, right? Sue Food Network, if they broadcast that episode, they promoted it more than any other show that week. You know, it seems like everywhere that I turn, somebody is waiting to screw me over. But not for long. Yes, because Chad Kensington had a plan. A plan to make it back into the public eye. I've been meeting with producers for the last few weeks, um, pitching them my latest script. Super Sexy Surgeon. It's all about a talented, sexy surgeon named Dr. Chad Sexington, who lives out in Hollywood. Uh, he deals with issues of life, death, and love on a daily basis. Most of the producers rejected Chad's script. Yeah, but you know, the script finally got optioned by the USA Network. Those guys will broadcast anything. Kensington made entertainment news headlines in the weeks leading up to Super Sexy Surgeon's premiere. He was finally back in the public eye. He was even able to quit his much-hated office job. Yeah, Carruthers. Get me Mr. Carruthers right now. Hey, Carruthers, it's Chad. Kensington, you haven't shown up for days. You're fired. Oh, yeah? Well, you can't fire me because I quit. Chad Kensington, he doesn't need this job anymore. Chad Kensington is going straight back to the top. I actually was able to catch up with Chad for one final interview before the premiere. He was excited about his new show. What's up, Randall? What do you need? I'm a busy guy. I just wanted one last candid interview. How do you feel about being back in the public's good graces? Well, it's not about how I feel. I think what's more important is how they feel, and I'm sure they feel great. I don't know how they survived without Chad Kensington for so long. I am the greatest actor of all time, and when you go without the greatest actor of all time, you know, that's why movies have been so crappy for so long. That's why TV sucks. It's because I was gone. Well, now I'm back. And yeah, of course I'm happy. But I don't need to be happy. What's more important? What's more important is that they're happy. They know. They know I'm better than them. And they're happy. Now if you'll excuse me, I, uh, I am editing my own show, Randall, so... In fact, the production of Super Sexy Surgeon overlapped with the filming for this documentary, and Chad found it difficult to give me any more interviews with his new schedule. Before long, Super Sexy Surgeon premiered. Damn it, nurse! This man needs a new brain, and I'm running out of time to give it to him! I can't approve that procedure, doctor, even if we are sleeping together. <sighs> this is a man's life! Do you understand that? Curse you, doctor surgeon! Your renovated ways are too much for this hospital to handle. Critical reaction to Super Sexy Surgeon was, to put it very lightly, caustic. Chad Kensington has reminded us why we hated him with Super Sexy Surgeon. The horrific acting coupled with the awful writing makes Super Sexy Surgeon pure garbage. My diagnosis for Super Sexy Surgeon? Two thumbs down. Chad Kensington should have stayed out of the public eye and remained in the underbelly of society. This is the thanks we get for accepting him back? Chad Kensington should have stuck with Narcop. Super Sexy Surgeon was to be cancelled after its pilot episode. Chad had planned to host an after party once the pilot had concluded. I received an invite and made the scene. They hated it. I gave them everything. And they hated it. Super sexy surgeon, the latest in a long line of failures, huh? What is it about me? You know? What is it about Chad Kensington? It seems like there's been this line of people my whole life, this line of people waiting to crap on me. What did I do? Chad. No, 
That's bull crap! You know what? It's bull crap. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this kind of shoddy treatment, okay? I am the greatest actor of all time. I gave them everything. I gave my livelihood for those people. I, I hosted this party. I rented out this flat. And this is how those idiots repay me? You know, People Magazine gave me negative three stars out of ten? Negative three? That's not even a real score! This is how I'm repaid for giving my life to the industry. You know, it's like they want Narcop. I can't escape it. That's all they want. That's all they've ever wanted is Narcop. They want me to fall asleep. They want me to, to put on the glasses and fall down. That's what they want. Uh, you know what? That's what they want. That's what they want. You know what I'm going to give them? I'm going to give them Narcop. No, turn the camera off. I am going to give them Narcop. That night, Chad fell asleep at the wheel of his car. He crashed into the side of a building, sustaining serious injuries, but surviving. No one else was injured in the crash, and the accident appears to have placed Chad back into the public's eye once again. Hollywood D-lister Chad Kensington was in a serious car accident four nights ago after the premiere of his new series, Super Sexy Surgeon. Kensington was moved out of the ICU yesterday and was available for comment. Idea for the second season of Super Sexy Surgeon. In it, Dr. Sexington gets in a serious accident and he has to perform surgery on himself in the season opener. The network loved it. That's right, folks. Super Sexy Surgeon is coming back and we're as excited as you are. Yes, Chad had one, it seemed. He had parlayed a depressive suicide attempt into a publicity stunt and a bid for public sympathy, and it paid off immensely. Critics re reviewed Super Sexy Surgeon, giving it much higher marks. Chad received hospital visits from many of Hollywood's elites, as well as numerous film offers from major studios. Chad was back this time, it seemed, for real. I'm not sure what to make of my time with Chad. Though he was a borderline sociopath with criminal tendencies and narcissistic personality disorder, as well as several severe drug addictions, there was something inspiring about the way he continued to view himself as humanity's single greatest achievement, even as his life broke down around him. I decided the best way to close this documentary was to let Chad have the last word from his hospital bed. entire career, people have put me down. They've said things like, Chad Kensington is a terror, Chad Kensington is overrated, Chad Kensington is irrationally angry. When Narcop ended, same thing. You know, Chad Kensington is a failure, Chad Kensington is washed up, Chad Kensington is a joke. And I was a joke. I was a walking, living, breathing joke. Everybody was laughing at Chad Kensington. And and I could never figure out why. But I think now I realize, I realize why that is. It's jealousy. It's pure, unbridled jealousy. People are jealous that humanity, not just acting, not just filmmaking, humanity reached its peak in one individual, me. And, and I totally get that. I understand where the jealousy comes from. But the problem is, it doesn't matter how jealous you are. It doesn't matter what you think of me. It doesn't matter if you laugh, if you hate me. You can think I'm a joke. I'm here to stay. I'm finally getting my due. After years of getting screwed over at every single turn. So it doesn't matter what you think. Randall, it doesn't matter what people say after this documentary. All that matters is Chad Kensington. And Chad Kensington is back, baby! Oh, God!
I never had a sky of blue I never walked a lane that had a turning I never found the answer to my lonely yearning Never had someone to love Though that's all I've been dreaming of So please, my darling, tell me that you love me too. Cause I never had a dream come true. Never had a dream come true, baby. Never. Had a sky of blue. Sing it, boy, sing it. Never walked a lane that had a turning. Never found the answer to my lonely yearning. 